Well, we're lucky enough to be at Hampton Court, famous home of King Henry VIII. One of the most haunted spots, particularly at this time of the year. Guys, I'm so excited! <laughs> we're here in Hampton Court Palace, the haunted Hampton the Court haunted, Palace. Yes. Joe's giving us the tour. I am going to give you the tour. <laughs> a spooky tour. A spooky tour, and I hope you'll be very, very scared. <laughs> So welcome Ooh. to the Great Hall. Oh, great wow. Hall. It already is haunted. I mean, look at all these animals. That exactly. Their heads are just staring at us. Aren't they just? <laughs> the eyes move as you uh, walk around the room. <laughs> follow <Stop>. you. <laughs> wow. This is incredible. It's wonderful, isn't it? So this was built um, by Henry VIII mm. to make a really great impression on all the people and if ambassadors came he'd have his most sumptuous tapestries out like the ones you see mm. on the wall full of gold and silver thread these ones are and uh, he just wants to make a big spectacle and make you feel very very small <laughs> and insignificant. you know and with so much space i imagine there's lots of room for ghosts to fly around here as well, well yes if they so <laughs> wish they could take off from the the gallery there the the minstrels gallery and just fly around the room but uh, nobody's actually said that they've seen anything like that in here. Oh. No, I mean, I think that the ghosts, the ghostly sort of apparitions, they tend to gravitate to certain other parts of the palace, like the haunted gallery, Ooh. where we will be going. It has a Harry Potter vibe. It certainly does. I mean, it was uh, the, the ceiling really influenced the choice of style for Hogwarts, huh. you know, the great hall at Hogwarts. So in some ways it has that claim to fame, but this is the real McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, perhaps we'll see some ghosts flying on their Nimbus 2000 <laughs> around the room. You make promises. I want to see that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see what we can do. We do can you get a lot of visitors in. coming here looking for ghosts? Very much so. Really? Very much so, especially at this time of year when we're sort of coming to Halloween, mm. the nights are drawing in. And you, especially the children, they're really so excited about the ghosts and finding the haunted gallery and then hearing the story of that particular place. Are we on the ghost trail right now? Well, we're going backwards in some ways okay. because <laughs> we'd actually make people go through the haunted <gasps> gallery in ones if they're very, very brave, or twos, <laughs> or perhaps three. I always say if you want to go in four or five, that's fine. There is no shame in being afraid. Oh, but you have to come with me. So, I'm not going to the haunted gallery exactly. by myself. <laughs> and you see, I, as a ghost tour guide, because I'm one of the, the few ghost tour guides here, I would walk through the haunted gallery on my own in the dark, <laughs> you know, we're hardened, come in here and then wait for each of the visitors as they come through. And if I don't get a scream, I feel really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do come through. Oh. Here we are. This oh, is wow. the horn room. You see all the antlers on the walls? Very literal. The horn very room. literal. <laughs> very literal indeed. And we're just going to come into the great watching chamber and this room is actually quite important for you to huh. see because when we talk about Catherine Howard and how she was arrested, her and her household were actually brought in this room, the great watching chamber, and some of them were dismissed and others that were felt were culpable in what was happening, what was going on. <gasps> Um, they were arrested mm. and sent away and Catherine was actually taken to her apartments and put under house arrest. So it all happened wow. in this room. It kind of is a heavy feeling because you're walking through and it feels like a movie set. It's so yes, beautiful and right. we yes. joke about ghost stories. But then to remember that yes. these are real stories real that stories. happened That's right here. Right, right yeah. here. Yes. I am too. We're leaving the safety of the other room. Here we go. Lock yeah. holding. That's the ghost. Difference in temperature. <laughs> Henry VIII there. Oh, oh. Himself. Wow. Most famous resident. Yeah. Most famous resident. <laughs> A very imposing all. stance he's taken there. It's That's not welcoming. Right. That's right, because you'll, you see he's just got um, the hose, which is the stocking yeah. part. The idea being that attractiveness in Tudor times was the shape and the huh. muscularity of a gentleman's leg. Oh. So, of course, Henry VIII was always showing off that part of his <laughs> physique. 
<laughs> Good to know. Next year's Halloween costume. <laughs> now you've arrived in the haunted gallery itself. So this is oh. it. This is this is the actual scene of many crimes, shall we say? <gasps> what like what? Well, if you look, we just come over here. This is the important door here because this is where Catherine Howard, mm. she got loose from her guards. You know, as I said, she was um, imprisoned in her rooms, thought Henry was behind this door mm. of prayer, which is the royal pew. And literally, and if I might just do the actions here, she was <gasps> banging yeah. on the door, hoping and praying that Henry would answer and that he would forgive her and that she wouldn't go to the tower and be beheaded because that basically was her oh. fate. But unfortunately, there was no answer. And she was oh dragged my God. back screaming to her rooms. The reenactment is what got me. Yeah. Again, just to think of the things that happened here in the history. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of it's really scary and, and frightening Very things scary. that happened. Yeah. And if you think the level of emotion that mm. she was experiencing, and of course there's the theory that buildings sometimes absorb mm. heightened emotive situations. I mean, that's just one theory, like residual hauntings. Well, <laughs> it's no wonder that she appears here, to be honest with you. So have people seen her here? So when we had residents, this would be in the Victorian period yeah. in the 1800s, residents said that they were quite often awakened at night by a shrieking <gasps> and just they would come to the doorway, look into the gallery, and one lady actually said she saw a willowy figure mm. of a girl, all dressed in white. She came to the door, she sort of then was standing there as if she was waiting, and then suddenly, with a look of horror on her <sighs> face, she turns away and literally glides as if she's being dragged along down the gallery, through the door at the far end, all the time shrieking and sobbing and begging for her life. So, oh, there's nothing to say in response to that. So fancy, <laughs> fancy being in bed and then oh. being awoken and then seeing that. You'd never go to sleep again, would you? I'm not going to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> no. And then more recently, during the, during the daytime, mm. People sometimes say that they feel as if they've mm. walked into a refrigerator. But this is the strange thing. It just seems to have its own ecosystem, this gallery, mm. for no reason at all. Um, in fact, there was a time when a couple of ladies had fainted on mm. separate tours, <laughs> said that they'd walked literally into a freezer, fainted dead away. When they, when they recovered, they said that Yes, it was really cold, they felt punched, and then it went to blackness, and that was it, they were on the floor. But when they actually came round, they said they felt very, very hot and perspiring. Now, how does that match up? So, it's the ghost. so many things that we just can't explain. Huh. And so many people have had many experiences in this. In have this you gallery. had people come here, experts come here to take mm. readings? Absolutely. And monitor the space? That's right. In, t in a few years ago, we had um, Dr. Richard Wiseman. He came here. He's um, he's he's a he sort of researches into the paranormal, mm. and he was here over a course of a few days, and he had people come. They some were told that one area was haunted and that mm. another control area that he used wasn't and vice versa and sort of we, he actually had the Hampton Court Palace uh, warders mark on a map where most activities happen huh. and then sent the guinea pigs out almost <laughs> to, to go and find Would you oh, volunteer for that that's one? right <laughs> and they came up with the same spots Really? Yes, they did. <gasps> they, when you work at Hampton Court Palace, you realise very quickly that whatever is going on here does not perform to order. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't call in the ghost. No, no. Oh, I'll have a, I'll have an experience. Now. No, 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 no. It happens when you least huh. expect it and where you least expect it. There's another area in the palace which actually used to be Henry VIII's old rooms, his private huh. rooms. And there's a lot of things that seem to happen there. 
For instance, somebody, um, when we were opening up one day, the palace, and you go in, you open all the shutters and all the doors. <laughs> so they went round, they did all of that, and it's sort of a circular route. When they went back, all the doors, <gasps> all the shutters were closed. He did not want to wake and up. And I just think that is <laughs> terrifying <laughs> because nobody would have done it because you would have heard them and they wouldn't have had time. Yeah. This is the thing. Oh, weird. <laughs> So this is the Queen's Staircase, and it's, oh, uh, wow. it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that chandelier! Gorgeous. That uh, lantern, that's all the Baroque style jewelry. Wow, style. you're right, walking through is totally different. It's totally different. Do you notice sick. how spooky this echo could be too? It certainly Whoa. is. It certainly certainly is. is. <laughs> yeah, so let's go through here. This is the location oh. of another of our very famous ghosts. Ooh. You really get a different feeling in every yeah. space. And I've found yeah. that I've gone from cold to warm to, warm. to cold, yes. mm -hmm. despite the fact that the temperature's pretty consistent. <laughs> exactly, cold. exactly. And the thing is, yes, you get the variation in temperature, but then when it gets very extreme, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier with those two unfortunate ladies that fainted in the gallery, yeah. That's when you know that really something, something's going on that yeah. you can't explain. Yeah. Jane Seymour, Henry VIII's third wife, mm. and she has been seen yeah. to walk down or literally glide down because oh. normally ghosts don't walk, they glide, <laughs> don't they? Gliding down the staircase here and then through the door just mm. over there and then out into the, what we call the clock courtyard. And when she comes down the stairs, she has, she's all in a beautiful mm. white shift with her golden hair loose around her shoulders and a lovely shining face. Mm. Mm. And she holds in her hand a lighted taper. Now that's a very long, thin candle and the flame never flickers mm. and it never goes out. Wow. And she goes down and she goes into the courtyard and then she literally Circles mm. the courtyard as if she's looking for something or someone. What is she looking for? Well, this is the thing. She died upstairs <sighs> in the very same bed, in the very same room in which she gave birth to the future King Edward <gasps> VI, Henry's long for son. And of course, Henry was absolutely jubilant when it happened. There was a wonderful christening. But then 12 days later, on the 24th of October, 1537, she died, she'd contracted mm. an infection, mm. and that was that. And so after the prince's christening, there was literally Jane's funeral in the Chapel mm. Royal here. But the thing is, before they laid her out, they took out her heart and her internal organs. It's almost like mummification, huh. because she was going to be lying on the altar, mm. or not the altar, but on, on her, um, you know, where, where, where you, you rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And then taken afterwards to St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. That's right. So obviously they didn't want any kind of horrible smells mm. before they got her there. But what they did with her internal organs was to put them in a lead lined silver casket mm. and place them, bury them beneath the altar in the Chapel Royal. So what's she looking for? Is it the heart that she's left in the chapel? Or perhaps it's the young boy mm. that she was parted from too soon and she never saw grow into a king. Listening to you, you get chills, don't you? Yeah. I mean, every time, it's just, <laughs> it, it's heartbreaking too to hear the stories beside, yes. behind some of these ghosts, but then the, the image of her searching, it just, I mean, it leaves you speechless. It does. And normally she's seen in October because obviously her son is born yeah. on the 12th and she dies it's on the 12th. It's October now! And it's October now! <laughs> so, Jane, where are you? <laughs> yeah. At night, the palace takes on a completely mm. different feel. Yeah. So, if you imagine walking down these, <laughs> these, these, these cloisters without, you know, the daylight. It's spooky it's enough in the daylight. Spooky, very spooky. So, you see what we're, we're coming to. How would you like to be at this point? 
always think this looks like a Victorian it does. Sort of London almost. It feels like it a feels secret like a entrance. Movie, so. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So I brought you to this corner. We're mm. sort of under cover here, mm. but really the rooms also stretch out to the front of the palace. Mm. But just to give you the atmosphere, this ghost is Sybil Penn, our very huh. own grey lady. Now many grey ladies haunt around the country, but we actually know the identity of our one. Huh. And she has the royal connection because she was the nursemaid to Edward the Sixth. Ah. So nice time with Jane Seymour. And basically she was such a valued member of the court that 25 years later she was working for Elizabeth the First. Wow. I know, so she's very, very long-lived huh. and valued. But in 1562, when they were here, smallpox broke out. Mm. Now Elizabeth contracted it, but she survived because she was quite young at the time. But I mean, poor Sybil, I'm afraid that was it. Mm. Smallpox took her off. And all was well. She was buried in St Mary's Church up in Hampton. And we thought that, you know, she would rest in peace. You know, or so it was believed. Mm. But it said that lightning struck the church and that mm. her grave was disturbed. I mean, that's what people say. Mm. It could be that the church was just demolished, renovated. But then things started to happen at the palace. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less at this nothing point. Nothing less. So sort of in this area and going forwards mm. would be her apartments, her rooms. Now, guards who would be outside in the cloister, walking up and down, the, uh, just as we've done, they would be here at night and then they would report seeing mm. a lady, a grey mm. lady with a long grey robe, and a hood with her hands outstretched, literally <gasps> come down the cloister towards them. Oh. For one poor guard, he was standing quite stock still and he saw her go across and disappear through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so terrified that he left the post and he said, I'm never going to do that again. Wow. <laughs> he was so terrified. And this is where they would stand, right here. But they would be sort of walking up oh, and down, patrolling, yeah. making sure that everything was all right, because mm. it was at a time when there was residence here at the palace, mm. so it was in the Victorian period, the 1800s. And um, there was at least two sightings in her rooms. Mm. So Princess Frederica of Hanover, she was living in Sybil's rooms in 1881. She'd just given birth to a baby girl, mm -hmm. One day she walked past the nursery door, looked in, and she saw the grey lady literally leaning <gasps> over the cradle. Oh, stop! That oh, would do me yes. in! That oh, would do yes. me in! When she couldn't believe it, she'd never seen this woman before, she said to the nursemaid, well, who is she? And the nursemaid said, there's nobody there, I haven't, I haven't let anyone in. But the most horrific thing is, Three weeks later, the baby girl died. <gasps> oh. No. Now, horrific, isn't it? Now, Queen Victoria also visited her around about the same time as Sybil Penn, mm. so it's debatable whether the baby couldn't handle Queen Victoria or couldn't yeah. handle <laughs> Sybil Penn. So, you know. But also, we've had more recent sightings mm. where a lady who, and this was in, it was in the last few years, one of our HR um, managers, she came to work, there's a keypad like this mm. one at the front door, and she literally, she was just about to go in, and it, the door's a little bit like this, so you've got a window mm. at the top. And she looked through and she saw a figure and she thought, oh, perhaps that's a cleaner or somebody in early like myself. Well, the door opened and out came a person that she didn't know and she'd never seen before. And if you think she works in human resources, <laughs> they know everybody. Yeah. Stood right in front of her and then turned and glided all the way down the end of the building. It's the glide. And it's the glide. That's what gives yeah. the ghosts away. And later on when she described the tale and she literally was shown an effigy 
on Sybil's grave. <gasps> she said yes. Looked like the same person. The same no. person. And oh. she realised she'd come face to face with the ghost of Sybil Penn. This is the area you don't want the night. I know. This is it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'm glad yes. I'm with you, guys. Yes. So, have you liked the tour? <laughs> I know. Uh. <laughs> Are we frighten you anymore? Fascinating, though, right? <laughs> no, it's so really incredible. Is that these stories are consistent. You mm -hmm. hear the same tales yeah. over and over, over again. again. That's it. And it's it's a it's such a fascinating way to relive history as well because again you remember these are real life events, real things that happened, and the hauntings continue, they continue to, this to this day. They really do. Yeah. They really do. You have been so wonderful. Thank you that so much. It's an absolute pleasure. You have scared yeah, us, yeah, I think, um, to the bone. Well, that's it. I've done and... my job. I feel content. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. I oh, really hope you enjoyed Thank you the so palace. much. We really appreciate it. I'm off to try and find King Henry VIII. I know. Yeah, well, that's the next that, one. It'll be you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it will be you. Your moment has come. Boom! <laughs> 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 Did we get them? I feel like we scared people. No, maybe not. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. That was my best attempt. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs>